Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a debut on the channel for the Constructor Video Floral. Uh, that is a new name to me. And a puzzle called California Mountain Snake. And I guess that's what this red line is supposed to depict. I'm afraid I'm not an expert on serpents. Um, so apart from knowing that snakes aren't allowed to touch themselves normally, I have no clue whether this genuinely represents a California mountain snake or not. Um, but I can tell you this puzzle has a perfect 100% rating on Logic Masters Germany and some really quite lovely comments from those who've managed to solve it. So I'm looking forward to giving it a go in a minute. It's, it's a puzzle actually, it's got the same rule set of an absolutely incredible puzzle I did a few weeks ago by the constructor agent. Um, so yeah, anyway, we'll get to that in a moment or two. Um, I want to start today but with, with a measure of relief um, because Dr. Brian Green did indeed successfully defend his dissertation yesterday. I was sent the most amazing email. Thank you very much to Emily who sent me an email of Brian's reaction um, to receiving my message. <laughs> it really, really did make my evening. And um, yeah, I'm somewhat relieved because apparently when I recorded yesterday's video and it went live, um, Brian hadn't finished defending his dissertation at that point. So it was by no means a done deal. Um, but yeah, very well done, Brian, for I think you're, is it meteorology? Uh, your dissertation was in, but well, anyway, you defended successfully and that's very good news. Um, what else can I tell you about before, before I read you the rules of video florals puzzle? Let me think about it. We've got one week left only on the Kickstarter. So if you haven't got a copy of, um, of haven't ordered your copy of Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits Volume 2, please do so soon. Otherwise you might miss out. Um, trying to find some more pictures of it. Look, there's, there's another picture there. Lots of pictures. We're, we've, we've met lots of stretch goals, so it's going to be an absolutely extraordinary book. And uh, although I don't think we're going to get to see Mark play Dance Dance Revolution in a video, something I am mildly sad about, but never mind. Um, now, over on Patreon, I released a bonus video this morning. This is me solving this puzzle. Masudoku by Mr. Menace. Now, I, I did... Well, this is an incredible, incredible Sudoku puzzle. If you have a chance to have a go at it, you must. If you are a lover of the Japanese logic problem, Masu, you will you'll just be lost in admiration for this puzzle. It has been constructed with such incredible precision and care. It, it, is, it was a gem to solve, frankly. And, and the only regret I have is that this puzzle did deserve the widest possible audience, to be honest. It was, it, it's an incredible Sudoku puzzle. Um, but yeah, if you are a patron, do, do make time to have a go at the puzzle. That's the most important thing. But if, if you don't get a chance to do that, do watch the solve of it because, um, it's it's amazing it's just amazing anyway that's one thing over on patreon as well of course we've got the uh, labors of hercules sudoku hunt i've got more names for correct solvers for you so very well done to the following to david anderson to filippo philip sorry i've got to put my tongue and teeth back in filippo chona uh chris deeks paul wright grothar tom cooperthwaite will semmer david armstrong Alex Van Overloop, sounds like a new type of puzzle, Alex. Um, lapsed memory, um, <laughs> I don't know what that reminds me of. Um, Johan Meyer, Branda Schmidt, Bartosz Stanioff, George White and John Reed. You were all, you all got the correct solution. Very, very well done indeed. And just a few and other announcements to make as well. Gavin and Abby, congratulations on your two year anniversary. I'm glad, Gavin, that you have now started to watch the Sudoku videos as well as the crossword videos. Um, Magnus, you've turned 24 today. And I know this because your girlfriend Jenny wrote to us over there in Sweden um, with the message that she loves you and she thinks you are awesome. Well, that's not a bad birthday present, Magnus, if I do say so myself. Um, and then Mary, I have to wish you a very happy gluten-free chocolate cake day. Um, and that's from your partners, Craig and Megan. And I hope you have a great birthday, Mary. 
And then Riley, you've turned 18 today. And I know this because your boyfriend, Michael, wrote to us and he wanted to pass on that. He's super proud of you for getting into college. So well done, Riley. And then Thor Haller, um, it's your birthday today. And I should thank you, actually, for spreading the word about cracking the cryptic over there in Iceland. We're most appreciative for that. And your friend Solvig told us it was your birthday. So Thor Haller, we hope you have a great day as well. That's it. Let's have a look at what California mountain snake is all about and what video floral has concocted. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Shade some cells in the grid such that all shaded cells are connected and all unshaded cells are connected and no two by two box may be fully shaded or fully unshaded. Okay, so this is a yin yang puzzle, clearly. And what I might do is just make it clear that they have to be orthogonally connected, these regions, because they are the rules of yin yang. And it doesn't say orthogonally connected, but I think it must do uh, or it must mean that. Um, so what we're going to have to do is divide the grid into a big shaded area. I'm going to get this wrong. I think I've already made a ricket of this, actually. It's going to be quite difficult for me to make this work now with the, the way I've started it. Let's make it look like that. Let's start coming down here, it's coming down here. Is this going to work? I don't think it is. Ah, maybe that. Oh, this will be remarkable if I manage to... No, this maybe that then, and then that. That could work. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight all of those cells in grey. All of the white cells are therefore unshaded. Now, have we made a ricket? I think it is true to say, I think it's true to say that all the gray cells are orthogonally connected to one another. I think it's true to say that all the white cells are orthogonally connected to one another. And I think it's further true to say, I might have got this wrong, but I can't see a problem, that there's no two by two area that's either fully gray or fully white. So this could be the answer to the puzzle. When that, one day I will solve and that will be the case and that will be hilarious. Um, but I suspect this isn't going to be the day. Uh, but I suppose there might be a universe somewhere in which that happens. Uh, anyway, that's the first bit of the rules. Now, how does the red line work? Let's talk about that. In fact, I'll leave my shading in in case it's relevant. Along the red line, each run of cells with the same shading contains a non-repeating set of consecutive digits in any order. Okay. So that would mean these cells have to be a consecutive sequence. These cells have to be a consecutive sequence. Um, trying to see whether there's anything other, anything else that's obvious there. Not much. And then, and then it goes on to say, along the red line, digits in each pair of adjacent cells with different shading must differ by at least five. Um, so what that would mean is, let's look at those two cells. They, they have a, a so-called German whispers constraint, which means that um let's make this square a three if that's a three that square would have to be five different at least from three so it would have to be eight or nine and that's going to be the case whenever you get different shading so those two cells would have that same restriction those two cells would have the same restriction so wherever we have different shading in adjacent cells along the line we have to apply the five different at least rule wherever we have the same shading for two adjacent cells on a line, we know we've got this sort of renban -y constraint where we have to make the set of the set of shaded cells uh, into a consecutive sequence, but they can be in any order. So let's just take a look at this for a moment. Can't put one on it, so let's use two. So if it was two, three, four, five, six, that would be a potential way of filling that consecutive sequence, which ends here because this is unshaded. So it's a really, it's a remarkable rule set. I've no idea how constructors like Agent and Video Floral go about making these puzzles because uh, some people, somebody wants me to restart the puzzle because it resets my clock. Um, because you're very much juggling those two constraints and somehow having to impose some logic on the grid as well. It's incredible, but do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And the only thing that is jumping out at me in this squiggle of a grid is this five clue. Because 
Well, in fact, there are a whole host of secrets maybe I should talk about. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe this is this is important. There are some bedrocks, some foundations that we're likely to need to solve this puzzle. Now, the first foundation I'm going to talk about is let's talk about two cells that are adjacent on the line but have different color. So let's say this is shaded and this is unshaded. So these have to be at least five different. Well, what we can never do here is put a five in either of these cells. Because if we try and do that, the cell that's adjacent to it will be impossible to fill with Sudoku digits because it either has to be five less than five, so zero or negative, or five more than five, i.e. 10 or greater. None of that just doesn't work. So that's the first little secret that we can talk about where we have cells that are of different shading in adjacent, in adjacentness. But yin yang, which is the logic problem about the connectivity that we were talking about at the start, that has secrets as well. And there are two secrets I like to talk about with yin yang shading puzzles. The first is that you can never do this. You can never have a checkerboard in yin yang. And that's because of the need to connect the gray cells and the green cells to one another. So to achieve an orthogonal connection of the gray cells, it doesn't matter how circuitous the plant, the, the, the route we take is to connect those cells up, let's say it's that, this green and this green can no longer form an orthogonal connection because to do so they'd have to cross the boundary of greyness and that they cannot do. Now that leads to a little secret about the perimeter of yin-yang puzzles, which is that they can only have, I was going to say they can only be, only have two colours in them, that's obvious, that they can only be a stretch of shaded cells and a stretch of unshaded cells. And the reason for that is let's try and introduce a third. So let's say that we, we were going to try and do something like this. And then we said, well, we don't want these to just connect around here. In fact, look, I better connect that up to make it clear. So let's say we wanted to introduce some green over here in this gap. So now we've got four different contiguous areas of shading in the perimeter. And that's impossible because to connect these to these, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter how we do it, but you can see we're going to partition the grid into two and we're never going to be able to connect this at the top to this at the bottom. So what that means is in this perimeter, we're going to have one lot of green, sorry, one lot of shaded and one lot of unshaded in some proportion. And that's all we can have. So they're the two secrets, but that's why I, I immediately, my eyes were immediately drawn to this five. Because this five I know cannot be in this sort of relationship, i.e. the cells on either side of this five, and we don't know whether the five is shaded or unshaded, but we know that the cells either side of it must have the same shading that it has. So those three cells must all have the same shading. Right. OK, and that immediately tells us something about this cell, doesn't it? In fact, maybe I'll use blue and orange for this because I think that's the most colorblind friendly colors we can use other than sort of gray and green for shaded stroke unshaded. So whatever color the five is, these are also that color. But now I've got to avoid a two by two of blue. So that cell has got to be orange and that orange has to connect to all its friends. We can't make the whole of the rest of the grid blue or there will be a two by two of blue somewhere. So this orange needs to get out. Um, now what's that done? That has... Um, oh, it's bounded the blue. Oh, yeah, okay. The blue can't grow anymore. Look at that. So it's a little bit hard for us to see this, but the, this orange cell becomes blue, stays blue, stays blue, goes back orange again. So those three cells have to be consecutive with five. So the minimum we've got here is a three. The maximum we've got is a seven. So we've got three, four, six and seven for these cells. Now, that means this cell, oh, that's right, that is beautiful, good grief, okay. 
Right. So the, there are, there were more secrets to German whispers that I didn't sort of elaborate upon. But there are two digits that are very difficult on German whispers in German whispers relationships. And those are the digits four and six, because four only has one natural partner, because the only digit that's five away, at least from four, is nine. And six has only one natural partner, because the only digit that's five away from six is one. So how could either of those cells now be a six? And the answer is they can't be, because if either was a six, you'd have to put a one in orange. And you can't put a one on orange because of the one in the corner. And look at this. So neither of these is six. And then you can't put seven in, in this string, because to have seven attaching to five in a consecutive sequence, you must have six. So that becomes a three, four pair. And that tells us the polarity of orange because these digits have to be five different, at least from threes and fours. So they've got to be an eight, nine pair. That's absolutely lovely. That really is lovely. So now these squares are from one, two, six, and seven. And so do I know what color this is, is the question I'm thinking about. If that is, Oh no, actually I don't know what it is. I was thinking it's going to be very difficult for it to be orange. Because I was thinking if it's orange, but it could just be 8, 7, couldn't it? And it could even be 8, 7, 6. Well, it couldn't be as 8, 7, 6, 5. So it couldn't be, a, it couldn't be too long a string of orange, but it certainly can be a little bit orange. And if it was blue, it would just be low, it would be a low digit, it would be a 1 or a 2. Oh, bobbins, right, okay. How strange. So do we know now the colours? Well, it's quite unlikely that grey is blue. I know that grey is not blue in theory, but the sentences we get to say on Cracking the Cryptic can take on some arcane meanings sometimes. Um, and what I'm seeing here is if grey is blue, Remember that we have to then connect the blues across, along the boundary in one great big long string. So if that was if that was blue, that whole string has to be blue. Because if we try if this is blue and we try and interpose an orange, when we connect these oranges together, this blue will be isolated from these blues. So what is preventing a great big mass of blue around the edge? Um, I get some oranges. I get quite a lot of oranges to avoid two by twos. Hmm. I can't see immediately. There might be some pressure up here because you'd have a string of blues and orange there, and I can't. I can't work out how that works. With is this the head of the snake? I, I, no, it's not. I think this looks just like. This is just a big long snake, isn't it? I think that, that probably isn't the head of the snake. Unless the snake's got two tails, which would be a most unfortunate snake. Um, okay, well, let's try the other then. What if that's orange? If that's orange, it has to connect to those oranges. So that's going to create a great big wren ban. Um... Sorry, and I'm not seeing that either. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill it in while I think about it. So I can see that if, if this is a string of oranges, that has to be eight. Because if it was nine, you'd have an eight above it. And there's no way you can't have an eight in the consecutive sequence with nine here. So you'd have two eights in the column. So the only way this works is if you have a nine here and an eight here. Eight seven six five four. So that that doesn't work. Right, okay. I can prove this is not orange. It's quite tricky to do this, but it is true to say. And that's because let me just think if there's a better way of explaining this. Well, yeah, perhaps perhaps the simplest way of seeing it is to focus on the blue actually. If this is eight and this is nine. What's the order of this three, four? 
Well, we can't attach 4 to an 8 because it's only 4 different. It would need to be 5 different. So this becomes a 3 and this becomes a 4. And it's this 4 that breaks the column because this sequence here would have to go well, it can't have 9 on it, so it's got to go downwards. It's going to contain the digits 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4 in some order. And that puts two 4s in the column. So that's really actually massive, because proving that this is not orange, and proving therefore it's blue... Oh, and actually, <laughs> that means I can get rid of blue, which is a little bit unfortunate for blue, because this cell was shaded and was originally grey. So now grey becomes blue... And we have to connect all of our grey around the edge of the grid. And then I'm going to probably change my orange into green because that's my favourite favorite unshaded colour. So this is where we end up with. And now, yeah, this was the 2x2 two two thing I was noticing. Look, we've got a possibility of a 2x2 two two there, which we've got to avoid. A possibility of a 2x2 two two there. A possibility of a 2x2 two two there. A possibility of a 2x2 two two there. So we get a whole host of green in the grid. And the next place we'll look for a deduction is... I don't know. Uh, maybe it's this one. Maybe that's affected by the one somehow. So you can see that whatever this is, these two digits are of opposite polarity to this. So, ah, I don't really know what that means, actually. Um, do I know? Oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm being reduced to being completely inarticulate here. Does that green somehow matter? If that's green, that's also green. That looks tricky. Oh, let's look at that. If that's green, because you can't you can't have the checkerboard, this has to be green as well. And now we've got a big long st string of digits that can't work. That can't work because this this string of digits, even if I extend it another another cell, that's the longest string of green I could possibly have before we, we resume our gray, grayness along the snake. And the problem is that one of these digits here has to be very low. It's got to be a 2, and it's got to connect to an 8 at least. I mean, this could be a 9, but it's got to connect to 8 in the best case. We've got to put 8 and 2 in a sequence that's only 5 long at a maximum. And they, that can't work. Two, three, four, five, six. It's nowhere near. So that tells us that this cell is grey. Okay. And if that cell's grey, oh, so that means that's that's completely. Well, okay. No, it tells us how it tells us the polarity of this one because that's a high digit. This has got to be five different now from the, from the green digit. So that's not six or seven. So this is now low. This green has got to get out and meet all its friends. So we need this green to be more sociable and to come out into row four, column nine. Now, does that tell us... My, my gut reaction says this can't be a 9 now, because when I need an 8 here and there's going to be an 8... Yeah, yeah. So if this is 9, now this is 8, but this sequence, which we know is at least two cells long, has got to have an 8 on it now to be consecutive with 9, and it can't, because this doesn't bend out of column 9. So that doesn't work. So now we get the order. That's got to be 8, that's got to be 9, therefore this can't be a 4, that's a 3, that's a 4... Um, that's going to do something, but I don't know what. Do we, do we know? How's that impacting the world? It's doing... I haven't got a clue, actually. That's so strange. You get a flurry of digits and it just dies a death. I have a feeling I'm meant to know what this is somehow, or perhaps how far this extends. 
four. Uh, four. Is that <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> completely nonplussed. Um, green has to become grey somewhere down this column. Yes. All right. There's a there's a tiny point. I'm not sure if it's helpful or not, but there is a there is a point of interest, isn't there? Um, somewhere down this column, green turns into grey. Now across that boundary, we've got to put one of the, one of the digits has got to be a high digit. One of the digits has got to be a low digit. Well, the high digit can't be nine or eight. They've already disappeared from the column. And it can't be six, because if it was six, the low digit across the boundary would be a one. So somewhere in this column, there is a two and a seven at the point where the green flicks over to become a gray. Now that, that can't be it. The two must be on the low side of that, mustn't it? It just must be. There's not enough space here for, for there to be a green two. That's just nonsense. And in fact, the, the grey seven would completely obviate the ability of that to happen. So the green, the green two is lower than the grey seven. Sorry, the green, the green two doesn't exist. The green seven is higher than the grey two. Um, I'm confusing myself now, but that's that's true. So there is a two seven. Well, it's sort of a floating two seven pair. I don't know where it is, but I do know it's in consecutive cells. It's either there, there, or there. Okay, so where does 5 go in this column? It's not there. Because you can't put 5 uh, in a cell that's adjacent to a different shading. So 5 is on this line. Two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is huge because five's on the line, and I'm going to contend that five cannot be grey because if five is grey down here, given that we know there's a grey two down here, there would also have to be a grey three and four down here, and there can't be. So there is a green five down here, and therefore that. Well, therefore, if there's a green five and a green seven and eight, there must be a green six. So there must be a green, f so, so in fact, this must be, well, the two has to be as far down as it can be in order to allow the green five and the green six to live, live in column nine. And we know the seven is across the boundary with the two, so that's forced, and that must be the five and the six. Now, if we stare, stare hard at this, we've got a five, six, seven, eight, sequence we've got the seven flipping over to become a two across the the shading boundary and that digit must be a something that digit's a three by the power of sudoku and three must be next to eight or nine on uh, across a, a shading boundary oh that's beautiful right or is it actually hang on yeah, it is beautiful. What low digit can that be? It can't be one, two, or three, so it's got to be four. And that means that square's got to be a nine. That means there's got to be a four in one of these cells. There's got to be a nine in one of these cells. There's got to be a three in one of these cells as well. Although there's not many, there's not actually much snake around here, so there's that cell we're going to have to think about. There's got to be a five down here by the power of Sudoku. Um, and for our next deduction, let, hang on, let's, let's just take stock here and think for a moment about shading. So can we exploit the fact that we've got more green on the right hand side? I don't know, <laughs> I don't think so. Can we? Oh, all right, simple. Yeah, let's do something simple. That cannot be green. 
because it would have to be five different from four. It would be a nine and that would repeat. So that's gray and that's actually mighty. That's mighty because now this needs to be green to avoid a two by two and that needs to be green to avoid a two by two. So now we have got, this is consecutive with this. That's weird. Right, that is really interesting. I think this cell now is grey. Because I don't think if this if this is green, I don't think this has a, a legitimate value. Because if it's green, sorry, if, if this is green, this cell and this cell are consecutive digits, which means this is a three or a five to be consecutive with four. Now it can't be three because of this three, and it can't be five for the weirdest reason, which is, which is that if it's a five, then it's crossing a boundary. And well, you could think of that two ways. You could think of it, you couldn't then put a five at all in box nine, but in particular, this five is crossing into being uh, an unshaded cell and there would be no legitimate value for this cell. So, so this, right, so this is not three or five. This is definitely not green, which is probably a mightier deduction because that cell now must avoid a checkerboard. So that's got to be gray. This, oh, this is lovely. Right, this has got to get out. It's been penned into a cul-de-sac. Let's, let's let it escape. Now, can I make that gray? Oh, I can. That's going to make me feel better. That was sticking out like a bit of a sore thumb. Right, I've got to avoid a two by two. That's got to be gray. Um, okay. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that presumably um, I don't know. This is such a peculiar puzzle because you get a flurry of activity. That was absolutely amazing for a moment and I felt like I was king of the world and now I feel like I'm a prized chump again. Um, what am I meant to do now? I have a feeling I'm meant to understand. Oh, maybe it's this sequence. Is it that sequence for some reason? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's Sudoku. Look, I've got a six, seven. In this quadruple, I've got one, two, six, and seven, and the six and seven are in two of those three cells. So where do I put six and seven in this box? And the answer is only in those cells. So these cells are five and eight. Now I've got a five pencil marked here. What does that mean? Why is there not a five pencil mark there? I don't know. I'm not sure. How did I disprove this from being a five? If that's a five, what breaks? That becomes an eight. That would then need to be, well, it couldn't be three, but the thing is that could be gray as well. I don't know. I don't know how I got rid of a five from here. It doesn't look like that's a terribly logical deduction. It might just have been when I was trying to do an example. almost looks likely that is a five. If it's an eight, then this string of digits has to get longer, doesn't it? Because eight and four, well, we've got to, we've got to have five, six and seven on this string. So this would have to get two longer at least. Um, okay, sorry, I'm struggling now again. <laughs> uh, if, if, what am I meant to do here? I, I just, I haven't got a clue. I literally haven't got a clue. Is there some way to know what color this is? If this is green, 
Oh, I see it's, it just contradicts. Oh, that's so strange. Right, I'm sorry. This is really obvious once you ask, ask the right question. But I didn't understand it at all until I just, I thought, can that be green? And it, and it can't be. For, it's, it's related to the thing I was thinking about before, but I just didn't see the, the implication of it. If this is green, what can this be? And the answer is not 5 anymore, because these are crossing a boundary. So if that's 5, that has to be 10 or higher or 0 or lower. So that doesn't work. So this is forced to be 8. But then 8 and 4 are in a consecutive sequence, which means I need, I need to have 5, 6 and 7 as well in this grey gray sequence. And that cell would have to be a double Schrodinger cell and contain 5, 6 and 7 all simultaneously and all sort of available to complete the the Renban sequence and that just won't work. So in fact this cell is grey and that cell therefore is green to avoid a 2 by 2. Uh, avoid, avoid a checkerboard there, that cell becomes grey. This green on the right is now trapped and has to get out, so that comes out. Uh, oh, I was about to say the grey has to get out, but the grey the gray sort of has got out because it just connects around the perimeter. All right, but that's that's mighty. That is mighty. So now this cell is sticking out to me like a sore thumb. What is this one doing? Do we know what colour it is? If it's grey, I would see if it's grey, it could just be a one or a two. Then this green would have to get out. So, OK, you get a one, two pair and this would be a six or a seven. And that would have to be consecutive with that. Hmm, I can't see what's wrong with that. Let's try it the other way around. If this is green. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Right. So this cell is always under pressure. I just still don't know what color this one is, but I think I think whatever color this is, that one is always six or seven. Let me try that again and see if it's true. So if this is gray. You can see that that's a two cell sequence involving a one or a two. So this would have to be a one or a two. And then it flips polarity to here. So this has to be a high digit, a six or a seven. If on the other hand, this is green, then this is a six or a seven because it flips the polarity of the one or the two. But we can't have this being a low digit because even if this extends here and becomes green, there's no way you can have two on the same sequence as six within three cells of each other. So this is still going to be a high digit. So actually, this is always high, but this is still unknown. And that's really unhelpful. <laughs> it doesn't seem to help do anything. OK, so let's think about... How long can this sequence be now? One, two, three. It, it, well, it is four. It can't be six. We can't make both of those grey because this green has then become uh, very claustrophobic. So the maximum, we can make that grey and then the green would come here. And if we did that, one, two, three, four, five. So the maximum length of grey that this four belongs to and this cell belongs to is five cells. Right, so we, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can't, right, so that's not nine, interestingly, because there's no way of putting nine on this sequence because it, nine is too far away from four. So nine is in one of these. If that's a three, three and four are very, very uh, compatible bedfellows, aren't they, in that sequence? Hmm, okay. How do I do this then? <laughs> if that's green, this is a four cell sequence and that would force this to be five. If this is gray, but that's eight, we could have five, six, seven into those. Oh no, that wouldn't work. Ah. Okay, so perhaps what I meant to do is to pencil mark this cell. 
at least this cell, probably all, probably the whole grid, but you know what I'm like. Because if we just study this cell for a moment, it can't be five, six, or seven. So its options are one, two, or three. Can't be four, can't be five, six, seven. Can't be eight, there's definitely an eight there. And, it, and we just proved it can't be nine. So this is a low digit. So how could this be eight now is my question. And the answer is it can't be. Because if that's eight, we know the maximum extent of our gray cells are these three gray cells and they have to connect the four and the eight along the sequence. So they'd need to be five, six and seven. And this one simply doesn't have that, com that, that uh, availability of digitage. So this square is a five, this square is an eight. Now, can we go again then? This square, can that really be one? If this was one, this would be two, this would be three, and would be gray. And that would be three. And that might work. <laughs> Um, and two and three put no pressure at all on, on the world. This is really tricky. I wonder if I'm meant to look somewhere else, to be honest, because this is just... It feels incredibly difficult to make progress down here. But mind you... Well, it might, it might be this square, I suppose. This, this square, I can see, is under pressure, at least. It, it connects to two cells of different colours. So it's not... Right, OK, that's not 4, 5 or 6, then. And again, that's, that's to do with the secret, isn't it? 5 is impossible, obviously. 4 is impossible because both of those cells would be 9. So this square here is not 3 or 9, either. So it's only got four options. 1, 2, 7, 8... So if that was seven, that would be a one, two pair. And that would be nice. That would give me a one, two pair in row three and make this high. Hmm. Well, that doesn't actually look like, well, it, I mean, it, it doesn't look disprovable. And I think that that's the most constrained digit. Eight, eight would allow this to be one, two and three. Ones and twos just allow these to be high digits. You might be able to remove one of them. Five can't go in any of those cells. Can't go in these, obviously, because this, this square would then have to be five different from five. Um... Just trying to see if you can make that cell a five or not. If that's a five, it has to be the same color, doesn't it? Oh, that's weird. Oh, wow. Okay, this is it. This is it because this is this is ridiculous. Right. Where does five go in this box? And the answer at first blush is one of three places. But I don't think these places are actually possible. I'm going to try it with this one. I've just, I've just disproved it in my mind with this one. But I think it's the same point. If this is five, how could it be five? Let's, let's ask that question. Well, we know now it must be grey. And that's because if it was green, this boundary would be impossible because of the rules. But making this grey forces this green to get out. And that means this is a boundary. These have to be different colours, and you can, we can't put five on a boundary across different colours, so it, it's always impossible. You can't put five in either of those positions. That is that is seriously clever. That's seriously clever. I mean, wow, so I get five. And that's... Well, that now means these three squares have to be the same colour for exactly the same reason. So all of those squares are the same color and that color is not gray <laughs> that's not gray. <laughs> oh wow wow that's beautiful that is so surprising that five was the key digit i think i think 
I've been worrying away down here. I think this was available all along. I just didn't look up here. It didn't look promising, did it? But look, if now now these purples have to be the same color or well, you can see if they're gray this green is penned into a corral here and that's not going to be a good thing so they must all be green goodness only knows what that means so that right so now these digits now it's a bit like up here these digits have got to be either for they're either three four six or seven because this is just a three cell sequence that involves a five. And therefore, presumably I'm meant to pencil mark these two squares, I think. So if that's a four, that has to be, well, if this is three or four, this has to be eight or nine. Oh. I've, I was just wondering how I could have five here, but the point the point is, unfortunately, I've just mistyped and it's six and seven. Right, so if this is six, so it's one, two, eight or nine. This is one, two, eight or nine. Now this one is not eight, look. And that one is anything. Okay. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see what to do again. How can that just dry up? This is me being um, dense, I think. I think there's going to be something very simple here. This is so constrained in this top left-hand box. What's, what's going on? Right. We've got to get this green out. Okay. One of these squares is green. One of them is uh, grey. So, so, but, and that's because these can't both be green. Otherwise, we'll get a two by two of green. And if neither was green, this green would be isolated. So this is one of each. Now, what does that mean? I wish I knew. This is one of each. So gray. So if this is gray, we've got a three cell gray sequence. If this is gray, we've definitely got a two cell gray sequence. Oh, no, 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 no. It's much simpler than this. It's much simpler. It's beautiful, actually. It's beautiful again. I keep, I keep missing the beauty but I'm finding the beauty in the end I just overlook it at the start it's like oh I don't know it's like any number of films where where the hero or the the anti-hero doesn't see doesn't see the beauty in front of him anyway look this four where does that go in this box and the answer is not there because that can't be a nine therefore it goes in a blue cell and if it goes in a blue cell and we know this is one of each then it's crossing a boundary, so it must accompany a nine. And I can see what that's going to do, actually. Because if that's a four nine pair, that's knocking this out from being a nine, which is making this low polarity, which makes that high polarity, makes this high polarity as well. So now, now this is low polarity, so that's a one two pair, because it can't be a three. And obviously this can't be a four because the four has gone in the box. So I've now got a one, two pair. I've got a one, two pair. Ah, look, I've got a one, two pair in row three. So this becomes six or seven. Does that mean I know the color of it? Probably. Yes, it can't be gray because those two cells would need to be consecutive and they're not. Um, so that must be green, which means these. Well, that does that mean I know what this is? If that is gray it would be low and it could be low I think if it was green it would have to be consecutive it would be five or eight and it can be either I don't believe it oh it can't be five because that would cross the boundary it would have to be eight. Oh, bobbins right okay um <laughs> oh simpler than that there's a nine looking at that cell so that's a four and that's a nine does that help me 
please help me. That's not four anymore. So that's, no, that can still be nine. Um, this cell, oh yes, so now I know the colors of these, of course. Yeah, let's do that because I think that must be important. So the, the reason I say we know the colors is how could this be green? If it's green, it's different polarity to gray and this would have to be a nine and it can't be. So that cell there has got to be gray, which means this cell here is green, which means this is avoiding a two by two and becomes gray. This is a checkerboard opportunity. So that's got to be green. This cell is part of a consecutive sequence, isn't it, with this cell? Yes, these three cells are consecutive. So that can't be a one because this can't simultaneously be two and three. So that's two, that's one, that's three. Doesn't seem to do it very much at all. Does that mean this has got to be seven? Maybe it can, it can still be seven. Uh, this square's become a two. So that square's a seven to be five different. That square's become a six. So this one's down. Oh, that one's done. That's a seven now by the power of the three. Oh, so this is eight. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm, I welcome it. Right. These squares are a one five pair. That's not a one. Therefore, this square must be known. That's, that's, that is a one. So those two squares are a six, seven pair. This is okay. So this is a two, eight, nine triple. And these are different, so that must be the two, because we need it to be five different from seven, and that was the only available option. So this is an eight nine pair, this is a one five pair. So that one can't be gray, I'm going to say. Do I mean that? No, I don't think I do actually. It can't be green. It can't be green, because if it's green, this is a boundary crossing and therefore it couldn't be five and if it needs to be five different from two and it can only be a one so this is in fact gray which means that's got to be green to avoid a two by two which means that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two which means this has got to be gray to avoid a checkerboard and these two digits are consecutive so that must be a one so that's a one, that's a five. These squares are known, they're three, four, and six. None of them are on the none of them are on the mountain snake though, so that's not immediately obvious how that works. This oh, this is a sequence, look. So that's got to be a six. Wow. Oh, which goes very nicely with our one here. Oh, and this is crossing a boundary. Look, that cell, that nine is becoming a low digit, which is not a one or a two. So that's got to be a three or a four. That six is giving me a six and a five. I see some Sudoku going on. It is outrageous. Video floral. I've only had an hour. How can I, how can I already be being asked to do Sudoku? Um, hmm. Right. So now... Right, now that cell is definitely not green, because if it was green, it would have to be five different from three or four, and it would have to be an eight or a nine, and it can't be. So that cell is grey. Now that means we've got to avoid a checkerboard here, so that's grey. We've got to avoid a two by two there, so that's green. I love yin-yang puzzles. This is a green cul-de-sac, which has got to escape. So we've now found our way to, well, we've got a couple of shadings in the middle box. We've got, well, what else have we got? Let me think about that for a moment. We've got, um, probably what we've got to do is to think about this sequence is my thinking. So that sequence, yeah, okay, that sequence can't be extended terribly far, can it? Because look, it's a sequence that starts here, 
and it can't end here because if both of those are grey this green is penned in. So the maximum length of sequence from here is going to take in this cell as a grey cell which is one, two, three, four. So that means the digits along this line can be four, five, six, seven as a maximum. Okay, so so that digit can't be six or seven or one or two. What's this digit? Um, that digit. Because it because it's it can't be further away than seven from this cell. So when I say seven, it, I don't mean it can't be. It can be seven plus that cell. I mean it, because because the maximum length of this sequence is four cells. If this was a four, I could go five, six, seven as a maximum. So this this square we can see cannot be six, seven. It can't be one or two. So I think it can only be three, four, or five. And that's that's gorgeous. Right. That's the this cell does it then, doesn't it? Because how could this cell now be green? If this cell is green, it's different colouring to this one, which means this couldn't be five. And if it's three or four, this has to be eight or nine to be five different, which we know it can't be already. So this square is grey. Now that's good and bad, actually. Well, it's good. No, it actually is good. It's just good. It's just good because I'm seeing it's doing some yin yanging. Those have both got to get out. And. OK, that's good, is it? I'm sure it is good. I'm just trying. I'm feeling I'm just meant to be able to fill this in now. But my brain is not telling me how to do that. Um, so, I'm wondering if it's this square that's under pressure. I almost think that I've got to do this the slow way and pencil mark this, this column fully, which I don't, you know what I'm like about that. I just don't like doing it. I mean, is it really possible for those to be a 3-4 pair? Is that going to do some damage to something or other? So these have to be in a sequence that's four cells long. Why can't I just see how to do this? I'm so sorry if this is obvious. I think probably I have to do it. I think I'm going to have to pencil mark this. So one, two, four, five, seven. Now, what legit, that clearly can't be seven. This square here, what can it be? Well, I think it can be a lot of things, actually. This square here can't be two or five. Oh, Oh no, right, it is easy. It's much easier. It's much easier. The whole point is this, and I could have seen this really quickly as well. Um, this, These digits are on this sequence, but the, ni neither of those two cells, look, can be a six. So these squares have got to be selected from below six to be in a four cell sequence with these digits. So we're looking at We've only got five digits to choose from and four of them. So we've got to have two, three and four in this in these four cells. Right. And then the two, where does the two go in this these four cells? There must be a two in them and it doesn't appear to be able to be there. So that's got to be two. So. OK, so the right. Another thing I've just noticed is that the seven now can't go in either this cell by Sudoku or this cell 
because if there's a 7 in the sequence there must be a 6 on it so the 7 drops down to the low point low part of the grid okay I am going to have to pencil mark it I'm sorry I, I thought I was going to get away without doing it but it seems not so 1s 4s and 5s so this I think that's well it's not 5 actually because of this reason but I think it can be 1 or 4 if this was 1 that's 2 that could be a 3 4 pair that works lovely beautifully if this is a four that could be a three and that could be a five bobbins okay oh but this crosses a bound oh that's it there you go now this one crosses a boundary so if that's a four that would have to be a nine which it can't be this has been put together so cleverly because that that getting this as a one of course and this means that this four cell sequence must be one, two, three, four, which immediately means that cell is not a five. That gives me a three, four pair here, which means this square is a five because it's not one or four, therefore. So the bottom of the grid needs to be four and seven, which we can put in, which means I get a seven and a six over here. I get a seven in one of these two squares. I get a five nearly in the corner. I get... Oh, I get a one in one of those two squares. Let's think about this digit, which is a six by the power of polarity, because it's got to be five different from one and it can't be seven, eight or nine. So that's a lovely digit we get for free. That's a seven. That's a six at the top. Seven in this box now goes here. So I know what these are. These are one, eight and nine by the power of Sudoku. This is a That's a three. Can't be a two because of that one. So that's a two. And I know what these squares are. They're five, five, eight, and nine. Well, there's an eight, nine pair. So that's a five. These two squares now have to be an eight, nine pair. So these squares are one, two, and seven. We might be able to do some eliminating there. That's not one, that's not two, and that's not seven. Ah, and that means that could still be low, I think. Oh, dear oh dear um is that really true okay uh, the other thing you have to do with this puzzle is i keep having to flick back between sort of renban whispers yin yang and sudoku there's like four things i'm trying to juggle i'm doing very badly at it but i promise you i'm doing my best um three no i don't i i could pencil mark this down here i'm not sure there's any point though i think it's better to focus on digits that are actually oh can that really be a seven now oh i don't oh no it can you rotten thing oh no it can't that would have to be a six it can't for, for a reason i wasn't expecting at all if that was a seven i was looking at the four five and the one two three thinking well they can't be in a sequence and then i saw this digit as potentially in the sequence and i thought oh no that takes the pressure off because you could put the six here but then i noticed that you can't put the six here so actually this is a two i think um let's just double check that if that's a seven I can't make both of these grey because this green gets penned in. I could make this grey. I'd need a six on the sequence. I simply cannot have one. So that square is a two. So that's a one. That's a seven. Doesn't seem to do very much at all, actually, by Sudoku. There's now a seven in one of two places here. Bobbins. Um... Well, it's incredibly unlikely that these are the same colour. Uh, can we disprove that somehow? If they're the same colour, we've got to put two, three, four, five somehow. Well, that doesn't work, actually jeepers creepers this is quite complicated <laughs> um i'm just wondering if there's a simpler it's the problem i think is the five so right so five is in one of two places in box five 
So if we make this green, you can see that, that before we get to this gray cell, we've got to put five on the sequence. Where does it go? It doesn't go here, there's a five here. So its only possible outlet is here. This would have to be a green five, but we can't make it a green five because it would be next to a gray cell. And that's impossible because of the whispers logic. That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, hang on. So let, I, I want to be careful here. So this is not green. This is gray, which means this has to get out. This has to get out. Don't make a checkerboard. So that's got to get out. Um, now we've got a funny thing here, haven't we? One, one of these has to be green and one of them has to be grey. And that's because, yeah, they, well, they can't both be green or we'd have two two by twos. And they can't both be grey because that new pentomino would never touch its friends. So they're one of each. And in fact, I can see the order because how could this one be the, be the green one? Let's try that. And the problem is this well, this cell now. This cell has to be consecutive with one because it's the same color as it. And the only cell that's consecutive or the only digit that's consecutive with one is two and it can't be a two. So let's say this has to be the other way up. That's got to be green. That's got to be gray. That gray has got to get out. So that's got to go up here. Um, this is now, oh, bobbins. Well, okay, it's an eight or a nine. I oh, it's good. No, that's useful. That's useful. I was going to say six, eight or nine, but it can't be six because this cell would then be a one again because that's the only diff digit that's five different. So this is eight or nine. Now these squares now have got to be a four and a six. Oh, I think that's, that seems to be okay, doesn't it? Somehow, some way. All right, well, then this digit is low. Are oh, we going to keep going? We keep getting whisper relationships as we move along this line now. That's got to be low. So that's two, three, four. It doesn't seem to be able to be one. So this is this has become high again. So that's not able to be one. This is not seven either. So this is six, eight or nine. Let's put that in and see if we can improve upon that. No, it's not six because that would have to be next to one. So this is eight or nine. And this green has got to get out. That's now been put into a cul-de-sac somehow, some way. So that green's got to get out. Oh, th this green's got to get out. Ah, here we go. So there's, there's some sort of connectivity question. We've just got a domino left of the yin yang and it's everything is not connected. This this sort of broken dog shape down here would be a perfect dog if that cell wasn't in it. But the broken dog has got to touch its friends up here, but not twice. We can't make both of those green. Right. So this is another of these situations where we've got one gray and one green to finish off the yin yang. Um, okay, and just let me <laughs> just let me take take stock here and see if I can see anything simple. Is there a simple way of doing this? Maybe, maybe not. Not seeing anything good at all. Ah! Is it Oh, six. I can put six in the middle box by Sudoku. I'm going to do that. So that's a six. That's a four. So that's a three. So that's a six and that's a four. Aha. Aha. If in doubt, use Sudoku. Now, has that actually freed everything up or not? I fear one, three, eight, nine. Don't think so. I mean, I'm going to pencil mark that cell. That's three, eight or nine. I can see it's mildly restricted. Um, oh, right. No, it's beautiful, isn't it? it? It is actually beautiful. It's such a simple deduction now once you ask the right question. But look, there is the there is the whole coterie of low digits looking at this cell. 
So if this cell was different polarity to this one, it would have to be low because this is high and it can't be. So this must be the same polarity, which means that must be green. And therefore that must be gray to avoid a two by two. And let's just stare at this and just take stock. So that's, have we got any two by twos or anything like that? I'm not seeing one, let's check the greens. It looks okay, doesn't it? It does look okay. Now, oh, seven, seven is not there. So seven is in the corner here, but I think that might be better for this square. That can't be five now, because it needs to be consecutive with eight or nine. So the five must move over here, oh, which we could have got as soon as we saw that this, oh, well, I've only just got that, so that's fine. I, that, that's, that's not terrible of me. So actually, this the only option for this square is nine or eight, because it has to be consecutive with this digit and it can't be seven. Right, so that's an eight, nine pair in this column. So five in this column goes here. This is an eight, nine pair. So that has to be a three, which means this. So we've got an eight, nine pair here. These squares have got to be one and something, one and three again. Ah, it's not done. Okay, one and three go here. So that's not three, so this is two or four. Oh, how can this still be resisting? How? I don't know. <laughs> okay, that square's not a one. So I've now got a two, three, four triple in this row, which means this square is one, eight, or nine. Well, it's not nine, so that's one or eight. Doesn't seem to be able to be four either. Oh, I suppose I know what these digits are now. These are 2, 3, and 9, just by Sudoku. That's not 2. That seems to be able to be anything. Those squares are a weird quadruple on 1, 3, 8, and 9, which suggests 4 in this row can only go here. That's really strange as well. Okay, uh, now this square is a 1 or an 8. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this must be something to do with um, it must be something to do with probably whisper logic, could be Remban logic. Thing is, this could be a four still, which is so surprising. It would cause double nine here. Eight eight, nine, I think it almost looks likely this is a four. Um, what else could we do then to try and unstick ourselves? What, what have we missed? What have I missed? Sit, the one turns into a high digit, that's fine. If this is two, there's no pressure on these digits, which suggests to me it's not going to be two. Oh, I know what it is. It's this Renban. That little cell there is hugely empower powerful. Because look, that's not consecutive yet. I can't repeat the two in the sequence. So that becomes a three, that becomes a nine, that becomes a two, so that's a four. Oh, it's not the right, it's not the way around I thought it was going to be. That becomes a four, that becomes a three. So that becomes a one, that becomes a three, that becomes a one, that becomes an eight. That becomes a nine, that's an eight. That's a one. Oh, and this eight still does the same work. Look, wow. Nine, eight, nine, eight, eight, nine. Is that the puzzle done? Might be. Yes, wow. <laughs> wow, that is, that's just simply stunning. Video floral. This, how have I not heard your name before? Because that, that is not the a puzzle that you can just come up with as your first puzzle. That is seriously, seriously clever. Um, deep logic. And, and I mean, this, the absolutely stunning point for me was this box and the five. The five in this box actually being restricted at all because of the way that the, 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 the that it would break a whisper that had to exist in these two squares. That is so beautiful. I mean, isn't it? It's amazing. 
absolutely brilliant. What a brilliant puzzle. We are so lucky at the moment. Every day we're doing these puzzles that they're not just world class, they're historically world class. You know, if, if you if you were to go through the panoply of puzzles that we've solved on the channel and, the, you know, the puzzles we solve on the channel are the best of the best. And, and these these puzzles at the moment are right up in that in that pantheon. Just amazing stuff. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I'd be interested to hear whether other people found that puzzle quite difficult. I found it quite tough, as you can see, an hour and 15 minutes. Um, but I did enjoy it. And I do enjoy the comments too, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.